Welcome to sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Yes, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. These were the famous words spoken by Dorothy, if you can recall, in the 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz. As you may recall, Dorothy, yes, Dorothy, was knocked unconscious during a tornado and ended up in the mysterious land of Oz, that magical land of Oz. And soon after arriving in this new magical land of Oz, Dorothy utters again the now famous quote, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Now, I mentioned this this morning because over the last several decades, the Christian church in America has also been identifying with Dorothy. Somewhere along the line, we were wrapped up in a tornado-like storm and somehow transported to another culture. It is true as we open the doors of the church, as we look out the windows and we gaze out of the church's front doors, we come face to face with a world that is different and frankly overwhelming. We look out the door and we say we're not in this American culture that we once knew. Indeed, there's a change in our cultural landscape of seismic proportions in which every area of society and life has been changed. Like Dorothy, again, we've got a feeling that we're no longer in an America that we once knew. Like Dorothy, the Christian church has recently been saying, I have a feeling we're not in a Christian culture anymore. Now, As many of you already know, the Christian church used to be in a position in society where it was in a position of influence and prestige and respect. In other words, the church was embraced and supported in culture. This resulted in society, in a society that understood the basics of the Christian story, the Christian narrative, the Bible itself. Words like grace and words like atonement and trinity were basically understood by everyone in the church and outside of the church. Indeed, most people understood the fundamentals of the Christian story itself. Even if they did not attend church, they knew the stories. Furthermore, people inside and outside the church would often seek out the pastor during times of struggle, in times of assurance, in time of need. Indeed, in life's issues, the church was often esteemed and appreciated The church was often put in the center of the city with the steeple sticking up over top of the tree line. It was at the center of society. Overall, there was a uniform, we could say a uniform and common foundation to an understanding of life. In spiritual conversations, you could begin with the assumption that those around you understood the basic biblical story, whether they were Christians or not. And so we could say there's no doubt about it that Christianity has enjoyed a relatively smooth ride these last 200 plus years in the good old USA. Christians and even pagans have tipped their hats to pastors. Sundays have been protected by blue laws and tax exemptions have been given to the church. We Christians have had it easy. We could say it that way. Indeed, we must admit we've had it easy compared to the rest of history. Over the last two hundred plus years, a person could be a Christian and not really have to suffer much of anything. 
much of a consequence from the state or from pagans in society. To be a Christian these last 200 plus years really has not cost us anything too much. No major suffering in America, no major persecution, no major mocking, no major attacks, no government fines or lawsuits. You get the picture. This is all changing, though. Indeed, we are no longer in Kansas. We're no longer in a Christianized culture. In this new culture, we have seen dramatic changes as prayer has been removed from schools, the Ten Commandments removed from courthouses, and the name of God stricken from the public sphere. Abortion is viewed as the right of many. Same-sex marriage is now the norm. And the church, instead of being respected, yes, the church, instead of being respected, Christians are now labeled bigots and haters with lawsuits and government mandates stomping on religious freedom. The list goes on and on and on. Right before our eyes, yes, right before our eyes, the church and Christianity have been kicked out of the public sphere, shamed and mocked and labeled. This has resulted in a Christian voice that is often not heard, often not sought out or respected. Furthermore, the Christian story has also been lost in our culture as well. We do not know the basic stories in our culture. Now, while this may be disheartening for you and me to hear, nonetheless, we need to hear it. But get this, it should not surprise us. You see, in our reading this morning from the epistle of 1 John, the Apostle John tells you and me these very simple words, but very important for us to hear. The Apostle John tells you and me that we should get this, that we should not be caught off guard when the world hates you. It's a very interesting word. We should not marvel. We should not be surprised or caught off guard or be, oh my goodness, what is happening? John says to us that we should indeed not be caught off guard when the world hates us. In fact, Jesus, in the Gospel of John, he tells us as well that if a godless world hates you and me, we are to remember that it got its start in hating Jesus first. For example, after Jesus' birth, we remember King Herod sent soldiers to Bethlehem to slaughter the children in order to exterminate the Christ. Years later, as Jesus began his ministry, he told the religious leaders about their sins, and as a result, while well, they began to hate him, they began to plot against him, they began to seek out to destroy him. Indeed, they developed a plot that eventually had him bloodied up on a cross. What harm did Jesus do to the world? Nothing at all except to point out the reality of sin, the reality of righteousness, the reality of truth. But nonetheless, the world hated Jesus. The world would not have tolerance for Christ, and they repaid Christ with fierce wrath, bitter hatred, and death on a cross. And so, dear friends, if you and I live on the world's terms, the fact of the matter is this, the world will love you as one of its own if you live on the world's terms. But since you have passed from death to life, since you are blood-bought in Christ, since you are baptized into Jesus, since you belong to the kingdom of God, since you've been snatched from the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of light, well, John tells us this morning that you and I should not be surprised. We should not be surprised by persecution. We should not be surprised by hatred and scorn from the world Indeed, we should not marvel. We should not be caught off guard by this. Let me try and be as blunt as possible. The cozy, comfortable life that the church has experienced in America for the last 200 plus years, as much as it's been great, we have to understand that this is not the standard. This is the exception to the rule. Indeed, it is the exception. Historically and biblically speaking, being a Christian typically does not include roses and quiet walks on the beach, but rather, historically, biblically speaking, being a Christian includes a thorny cross and suffering at the face, in the face of the world itself. Baptized saints, again, do not be surprised when the world hates you. In fact, we should learn to expect it and not be astonished, to not be caught off guard when the world treats you and me the way that it treated Jesus. 
But this is where the obvious problem exists for you and for me, and that is this. We don't like persecution. We don't like being hated by the world. It makes us feel uncomfortable. Name one of us in this sanctuary that enjoys being the butt end of a joke. Name one of us in the sanctuary that enjoys having scorn tossed our way. And so there's a part of us that wants it like the good old days. Indeed, we want it like the good old days. But dear friends, those good old days were the exception. They were not the norm. We're not in Kansas anymore. We actually need to come to terms with the fact that the Christian-friendly version of America has perhaps sailed leaving you and me with a world that will hate us just as they hated Christ and indeed continues to hate Christ. And so again, we shouldn't be surprised, as John tells us this morning, we should not be surprised when the world hates us. Instead, we should come to expect it. In fact, when the world hates us, we could say, let the world do what it does Let the devil spread his fear and let the world burn with its fury. But you, as dear baptized Christians, again, you will not be surprised by the world's hate, but indeed take comfort, for you are safe in the ark of the Christian church. Indeed, from the ark of the Christian church, know that you actually have, in spite of the world, that you have nothing to fear. For Jesus has promised us in Scripture that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against his mighty fortress, the church embedded in his grace, the church embedded in his comfort, the church embedded in that gospel, the gospel for us. And so hear this, blessed flock. The Holy Spirit through the word is your comforter against terror, your truth against lies, and your witness against tyranny. You are not alone in spite of the persecution of the world. We are the church. We are the bride of Christ, and Christ, while he protects his bride, no matter how bad it gets, he will not abandon us. Blessed baptized saints, we must keep in mind that the fight that we find ourselves in right now is to not get back to Kansas. The fight is not to somehow try to get back to Kansas, to somehow get back to a Christianized culture, to somehow to somehow avoid persecution, to avoid the hate and avoid the tax from the world. But instead, the goal is and always has been is to remain and abide in Christ who has called us out of darkness into light. And so what all this means, what this all boils down to is this. Regardless of the culture or the age that we find ourselves in, nothing really changes. If there is favor from the world, well, it's all about Christ for you and for me, and for our neighbor. But if there's hate from the world, get this, it's all about Christ for you, and for me, and for our neighbor. Nothing actually changes. Whether the world itself is kind to the church or cruel to the church, it does not matter, because it's really not about the world. It's about Christ who is for you. It's about you being tucked into your baptisms, about you abiding in the ark of the church, by you abiding in Christ the one who is for you in spite of the world. Therefore, baptized saints, be confident, yes, be confident in the midst of the coming persecution. Stand firm. Do not fear the land of Oz or the wicked witch, we could say. Do not fear the evil foe, but rather receive and confess Christ Christ crucified for the forgiveness of your sins in season and out of season. Receive and confess Christ crucified whether the church grows or declines, whether we are persecuted or embraced. Receive and confess crucified when it is popular or when it is not, when it is politically correct and when it is politically incorrect. Receive and confess Christ who is for you. In the months and years to come, The devil and the world may attack us, may attack you, may attack this church, but they will not overcome the baptized Christian. Indeed, we might die, but we will not fall away. The Lord will keep his own. Jesus did not die in vain and will not give up on you and me. He will not let the devil and the world stand between you and him. He is with you in the present moment to the very end of the age. 
regardless of the season of life we find ourselves in. Again, whether the church is favored or scorned, it does not matter. And we shall not be surprised. For the Lord does not change, and the Lord does not bow to the kingdom of darkness. Dear saints, abide in Christ. Remain in Jesus. Be steadfast in him who is steadfast to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thy strong word bespeaks us righteous, bright with thine own holiness. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit St. Paul's website at www.stpaulsminot.org. The Lord bless and keep you.